Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the solid liquid separations, the need for solid liquid separations, the different methods involved in the solid liquid separation such as the sedimentation, thickening, filtering and zero liquid discharge technologies. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the transportation of solids from one place to another using different conveying systems. First of all, we need to know what is transportation process. The transportation is the movement of bulk solids from the raw material stage to the product stage using the conveying mechanism. The transportation enables them to get converted into products either from the raw material to products or they can be transported from products to the packaging section. Then they can be even stored. Why do we need a transportation process? There are many reasons for transporting the materials from one place to another. The significant reasons are the raw material has to be transferred from raw material storage area to the process area where the raw materials get converted into products. The raw materials can be transported from the raw material storage area using the conveyor. As we can see in the thermal power plants where we can see the coal get converted to the gas energy. So from there it can be transported from the conveying system. The next reason is from one process to the another. In between the process we can transfer the material from one process to another using the conveying system. As of now there is a biscuit industry means so we can transfer the biscuits that is the mixed dough which can be cut into different biscuit shapes can be transferred from that area to the baking area where we use the open air oven so that the hot air will be passing through the biscuits and the baking takes place. The next reason is after getting converted into product it can be stored to a bins or silos which we have discussed in the earlier lecture series. So the bins or silos are the storage area where the product gets stored from the manufactured area. The manufacturing area after storing in the storage area it can be sent to the packaging area. The product gets transferred from the storage area to packaging area through the conveying system. After packaging the packaged materials will be sent to the godowns or storage areas through using the conveying systems. For example we can see the soap industries. In soap industries the bar soaps which are cut into pieces and packaged into the boxes and then it can be sent to the storage area using the conveying system. Now we move on to the conveying systems. The conveying systems are the most common systems which are used in mechanical material handling equipments. The conveying system uses the different methods such as chain conveyors and belt conveyors, screw conveyors etc to transfer the materials from one place to another. They are very easy to handle and it can be extended or it can, we can reduce the sizes using the conveying systems. Now we move on to the different types of conveyors. The first one is the belt conveyor. The belt conveyors are useful in transferring coal from raw material storage to the boiler for heating in the thermal power plants. The second one is the screw conveyors. The screw conveyors are mostly useful in transferring the paste materials or cohesive materials. The third one is the chain conveyor. In chain conveyors are mostly useful for traveling the packaged materials. Already packed materials are sent to the godowns through the use of chain conveyors. It can extend up to several kilometers. The last one is the pneumatic conveyors where we can transfer the powdered particles which can be fluidized and pumped to different packaging section or storing section from where we can package and send to the storehouse. Now we move on to the belt conveyors. The belt conveyors are mostly useful in the cement industries or the thermal power plants. The belt conveyors will be transferring the coal or cement limestone through the belt which is made up of fabric or the rubber. The belt conveyors can be placed either horizontally or inclined at a particular angle. The belt conveyors will be working in the principle when the mechanized motorized pulleys will be rotating in both the ends where one will be moving forward and the other will be moving backward. The pulleys will be operating the belts from forward to backward direction. The belts will be coming and moving back. The belts will be fed through the feed hopper and it will be discharged through the discharge bins. Now we move on to the construction of the belt conveyors. The belt conveyors are constructed mainly by the rubber or fabric. 
the belts will be useful for carrying the materials from the feed end to the discharge end. So the mechanized pulleys will be placed at both the ends which will be driven by motors. The tightness will be holding the belts tight and it will be distributing the equal pressure on the belt surface. So we will be easy to move without having the slippage or spillage of the materials. In belt conveyors we are having a small rollers named as idlers which is present along the length of the belt conveyor. The idlers will be helpful in maintaining the depression in the middle of the belt and the rising at the edge of the belt. The belt conveyor will be having a feed hopper at the feed section and the discharge bins at the end section. That is how the feed materials are transferred from one end to the other end. Then the materials get discharged. Now we move on to the working principle of the belt conveyor. The feed hopper feeds the belt conveyor on the feed surface from one end and it is getting transferred to the other end through the help of the mechanized motor pulleys. The mechanized motor pulleys are driven by the motor which will make the feed move forward from the feed point to the discharge point. Then the pulleys will be rotating the belt backwards again to the feed point. So that is how the feed materials are getting transferred from one end to the other end with the help of the pulleys, tighteners and the idlers. Now we move on to the applications, merits and demerits of the belt conveyor. The applications of the belt conveyor are used in many wide industries. Few of them are the coal industries that is the thermal power plants and cement industries and different pharmaceutical industries also. That is for making the ointment caps and packaging portions also. So then the lozenges are even getting transferred from one end to the other end. The advantages of the belt conveyor. The belt conveyors are easily available in all sizes. It can be useful in transferring from one end to the other end without having any spillage and the economic balance for the belt conveyor per ton of the material to transfer from one place to another is very less. The demerits are it is very expensive at the installation stage. Now we move on to the screw conveyors. The screw conveyors are the conveyors which are helpful in transporting the pastes or cohesive materials from feed end to the discharge end. This will be helpful in rotating the blades which are helical in shape which makes the paste materials to rotate forward and transferred from the feed end to the discharge end as shown in the figure. Now we move on to the construction of the screw conveyor. The screw conveyor consists of the parts such as U-tube covering, bevel gears, shaft and then helical coils. The helical coils are rotated with the help of the regulated speed of the shaft using the bevel gears. The U-tube will be having the jacket which is having the provision for either heating or cooling of the feed material. The feed material will be dropped by the help of the feed hopper and then collected using the discharge bin. Now we move on to the working of the screw conveyor. The screw conveyor is switched on and then the bevel gear will be regulating the speed of the shaft. The shaft rotates axially which makes the welded helical coil to rotate from the feed end to the discharge end. The feed gets trapped in the helical coil and then it is moving forward with the help of the helical motion induced by the shaft and then gets collected in the discharge bin. Now we move on to the applications, advantages and disadvantages of the screw conveyor. The applications of the screw conveyor are transporting the pasty, cohesive, abrasive and non-abrasive materials from feed end to the discharge end, which is useful in different materials where we can use even the fertilizers to get transferred from one end to other end with the mixing position where we can use either heating or cooling which is present in the jacket end. Now we move on to the advantages of the screw conveyors. The screw conveyors will be transferring the pasty and cohesive materials which can operate either at high pressure or low pressure. The screw conveyor can even work at high temperature and low temperature with the help of jacketed motion by heating or cooling. When we want heating we can use the hot water and when we want cooling we can use the cool water for heating and cooling of the mixture. Disadvantages. 
the disadvantages are the high power consumption which is consumed by the screw conveyor now we move on to the chain conveyor chain conveyor is mostly useful in the packaging industries the two elements of chain conveyor are chain element and chain attachment where we can attach to the flight element or wooden element so that the material will be transported from the feed end to the discharge end it is mostly useful in packaging industries and it can be useful in sending the packed items to the, the go down product now we move on to the different types of chain conveyor the first one is the scrapper conveyor where we can use the packing materials from one place to another where the chain element and chain attachment are added to the wooden flight the second one is the apron conveyor the apron conveyor is mostly useful for carrying the heavy or load materials from one place to another the third one is the bucket conveyor where we can use the plastic or cast iron bucket from one place to another from either from bottom to top or top to bottom it moves around two pulleys so that the mechanized motor pulleys will be delivering the sticky or bulky materials from one end to the other end. now we move on to the pneumatic conveyors pneumatic conveyors are closed conveyors they are mostly useful in handling the particulate powder materials which can be fluidized and it can be transported from one end to another end the motive forces are air pressure and air flow of the materials the next one is the classification of pneumatic conveyors the pneumatic conveyors will be carrying the fluidized material from one end to another end through the closed circuit the two different types of pneumatic conveyors are dense phase pneumatic conveyors and dilute phase pneumatic conveyors the, even the dense phase and the dilute phase pneumatic conveyors are classified into vapor phase and pressure phase conveyors the vacuum phase and pressure phase conveyors of the dilute and dense mediums will be having a closed circuit in the vacuum phase conveyor we will be sucking in the multiple inputs to a single output and the pressure conveyors will be carrying the materials from one input to multiple outputs where we can store the materials from one input to different storages the packaging industry is mostly based on the pneumatic conveyors where we can use the bins or silos the output of the bins or silos will be transferred to multiple packaging areas where we can pack the different sized materials so that is how the pneumatic conveyors are packing and classified into different types now we move on to the dilute phase vacuum pneumatic conveyors the vacuum force pulls the materials of the compressible fibrous and toxic nature these materials are the wood shavings the cotton fibers etc they will be transferred from the multiple sources to a single destination but they will be of very short distance now we move on to the dense phase vacuum pneumatic conveyors the dense phase vacuum pneumatic conveyors will be transferring the materials with the help of vacuum pull as we discussed in the dilute phase pneumatic conveyor the vacuum pull is of short lived and as we discussed in the dilute phase the toxic materials which are highly denser than the dilute materials are transferred from multiple destinations to a single source because of their compressible and toxic natures we are transferring using with the help of the dense phase vacuum pneumatic conveyors they cannot be transferred to a long distance at the end of this topic we have come to the end of this video lecture series in this series we have seen the introduction to particles properties and storage of particles size reduction operations size reduction equipments solid solid separations gas solid separations solid liquid separations and transportation of solids i hope you have understood the basic concepts related to mechanical operations in chemical engineering in future we will discuss more about the interesting topics in chemical engineering thank you